In today's video, we're going to be talking about DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So this diagram here on the right shows you what DNA looks like. And it's a molecule which carries genetic information. So you can find DNA in all of the cells and in the nuclei, and it's used for growth, development, function, and reproduction. DNA is a nucleic acid, which is one of the macromolecules responsible for life. So other macromolecules you might already know, there's carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Nucleic acids are the fourth type of macromolecules which are essential for life. So DNA itself, the structure of DNA consists of a sugar, a phosphate group, and nitrogen bases. So in the diagram here, you can see this orange ring, which is the sugar. If you can look carefully, you can see this P here, and this is the phosphate group. And these in the middle are the nitrogen bases. So in DNA, the sugar is called deoxyribose. It's a five carbon sugar. It's attached onto this phosphate group here and the phosphate has four oxygens attached to it. And then this basically forms the backbone of DNA. So it forms like one strand of DNA. And then you have this repeating pattern of the sugar and the phosphate groups, which basically forms like a backbone. And then you have the nitrogen bases here in the middle. And then you have another uh, backbone of sugar and phosphate groups so if you imagine like a ladder it's kind of like both sides of the ladder in the middle of the ladder is these steps which is the nitrogen bases so there's two nitrogen bases which are attached to each other so if you can imagine dna is like a ladder but it's twisted and rotated so it's like a spiral so dna is known as a double helix structure so we've mentioned that DNA has a, a deoxyribose sugar, a phosphate group, and it has nitrogen bases as well. So the nitrogen bases are in the middle here. Uh, one nitrogen base is attached to one sugar molecule, and it's the same on the other side. So the nitrogen bases, there's four types. There's adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine. Adenine and guanine are purines. So there's two carbon rings. So you can see here, there's one carbon ring here and, and another here. And guanine also has one carbon ring here and one ring here. Thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines. So they just have one carbon ring, which you can see here. Cytosine has one and thymine has one as well. So adenine can only bind to thymine and guanine can only bind to cytosine. And the way this bonding works is it's something known as complementary base pairing. So these nitrogen bases, they can only bind to certain other nitrogen bases. So that's why you have adenine and thymine only binding together and guanine and cytosine only binding together. So a combination of sugar, phosphate and a nitrogen base forms a nucleotide. Nucleotides basically make up nucleic acids, so they are monomers, and once you have a repeating pattern of them, you eventually get nucleic acids. So lastly, like I mentioned, we have this complementary base pairing. So if you can see here, we have uh, an example where we have this strand of DNA. So I want you to imagine the T is thymine, A is adenine, C is cytosine, and G is guanine. Um, Based on what I've said about complementary base pairings, each one will bind to a specific other base pair. So thymine to adenine, adenine to thymine, cytosine to guanine, and guanine to cytosine. So I've left this example here. If you can work out, write a comment in the comment section below what you think the other strand of DNA will be. This is just one half of the DNA. Remember, DNA consists of two strands, and in the middle, they're bound by these nitrogen base pairs, but the bonding only occurs with the complementary base pairing. So that's the only way that they can stick together. So this is an example here showing you one side, and this is the other side, and they're both complementary base pairs. Write a comment in the comment section below what you think the other strand of DNA will be.